author Brolo Tomasi of the Rational Male series would say something to the effect of this, that females, by their nature, when considering a scenario, will move from instinct to emotion, then to ration. Males, on the other hand, when considering their scenarios, will move from instinct to ration, then emotion. I would agree with this analysis. I'm going to, however, reframe these ideas into a way that's more conducive for me. And I'll also tell you why I'm doing it as well. For now, I'll ask this question. What is emotional logic versus rational logic? Here is how I would say it. Males are ration-centric and females are emotion-centric. Because the primacy of instinct is the same for both sexes, like an equation, I'll cancel it out on both sides so that we can get more to the meat of the conflict at hand. This is most certainly not to say that the instinct aspect is irrelevant. However, I think we can take for a given that people will primarily move from their instincts above all else. That being said, males and females work from differing scopes of logic. Logic is the glue that binds information to construct beliefs and then knowledge. I'm not suggesting that either form of logic is more or less valid. In fact, when left to their own devices, each side will naturally consider the logic of the other side to be stupid or unclear. My intent here is to map out each methodology of thinking in general. So not only can we see the manner that the two conflict, but how that conflict can be reconciled in the situations where such is possible. Males are ration-centric. This means that they deal with rational logic in their methodology of thinking. Rational logic is linear, where each point that's established connects to the next in a linear fashion. If it doesn't, it gets left by the wayside. Said differently, the point is the point. And if it's not about the point, it doesn't matter. This style of logic generally results in very direct forms of communication and tends not to consider the emotions of a participant in respect to the point of the conversation. In fact, unless the point is emotions, any discussion of emotion is seen as a hindrance in navigating to the point of the conversation. Said differently, rational logic has a tendency towards being linear to a fault. Generally, in the realm of rational logic, the more linear the logic, the more pristine or pure the logic is considered to be in comparison to other paths of logic. Rational logic is the masculine methodology of thinking. Females are emotion-centric, which means they deal in emotional logic as a methodology of thinking. As opposed to rational logic, which has a tendency towards being linear, emotional logic more so tends to be either circular or spherical. The manner in which a point is established does not generally constitute a single point, and those points are not connected in a linear fashion. The points here tend to connect based on the context around the points, and not the points themselves. This style of logic generally results in indirect forms of communication, and the emotions of any participant takes precedent over whether or not the conversation ends up in any specific place. For females, the experience of having the conversation is more the point of the conversation than any subject discussed. The tendency for this form of logic to connect its points of tension clearly is not simply less likely, but generally seen as a miscommunication within the realm of emotion-centric logic. Said differently, in an emotion-centric conversation, the point of the conversation isn't necessarily the point of the conversation. Emotional logic is the feminine methodology of thinking. Once again, I'm not suggesting that either form of logic is more or less valid than the other. In fact, when left to their own devices, each side will naturally see the other side's form of logic as either unclear or stupid. My intent is to map out each form in general 
so that not only can we see how the two conflict, but how that conflict can be reconciled in situations where such is possible. Emotional logic and rational logic can sometimes clash like oil and water. Both are fluids, most certainly, but their essential natures make the task of mixing the two quite difficult. One way I prefer to describe the two and their differences is as such. Imagine an animal that has sight as its primary sense and isn't very good at detecting scents. And another animal that has smell as their primary sense but isn't very good at detecting visual cues. These two animals can and do exist and perceive the same world, yet their experience of it is very different. The visual-based animal would attempt to explain to the other animal the different shades of color in a crayon box, and the other animal wouldn't see much difference in all the crowns because the wax doesn't smell much different. The scent-based animal could try to explain to the other animal all the different ingredients that they smell in a bubbling pot of stew. And the other animal wouldn't see much besides a bubbling pot of stew since all those ingredients have been mixed into one thing. 